Another Realm is a real play Dungeons and Dragons podcast, wherein Bruce, Tanner, and Will try to make dumb jokes and a compelling story. Some of the content within will not be for children, but if that doesn't bother you, then here's what happened on the last episode of Another Realm. You assholes decided that you're going to take our contract. Hey, douchebag, it was our fucking contract first. He didn't approach you, he approached me. They're trying to steal our contract. That was ours, rightfully. You think back and you pull a name. Death, as you know it, is called Taish. And all else is what people call a segment of the afterlife. Archie, this is what's known as the Cobbled Causeway. An elven ghost protects this bridge. Certain parts of you are not moving where you'd like them to as you unsheathe it and go to swing at the back of Archie. Archie, watch out! You try and shout out, and you cannot. I was down here for so long. I choose to knock him out, not deal lethal damage to him. You see six fall and you quickly get underneath him. And after a lot of effort, you make it up to the top of the stairs. If you found this, I didn't make it back. And he's going to go help the ghost. <laughs> um, so you, you head back down the stairs. Well, here goes nothing. Or everything... Hello, everyone, and welcome to the, the penultimate episode of The Never There, the part what? where we meet The Never There and everything ends. It's welcome oh, time, yes. so welcome mm. to the end of everything. Yeah, I sorry, like guys. You. We made Tanner sick and tired of being our DM. He's, yeah. he... Oh, look, it's Nivar there. <laughs> ah, you guys you guys got eight episodes out of me, and I'm done. Yep. That's See less you than later. Last time. Hey, it was fun when it lasted. I told somebody yeah. the other day, they asked how many episodes we thought we'd have. I said in the 60s, but what I meant was eight. 69? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Eight, yeah. In the 60s, just at the end of it. All right, so so we got the we got the quick recap. You guys heard the, the breakdown. What we're looking at now is Archie just snoozing in a cave, Scrunch dreaming of, <laughs> of fixing, uh, me, 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 I don't know, stuff. And then we can see Six walking. De- defiantly isn't the word I want to use. Uh, the, the adjective doesn't quite fit, but walking with purpose down the stairs on this. Not knowing the, what the fuck he's about to get into. Yeah, you're, you're, you're trudging down the stairs on the western side of the wound. The, the storm that had picked up when you guys uh, started to ascend is still going. The rain is is pummeling you. Um, you can hear the ting, 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 ting of it uh, going across in the, the places where your metal is exposed um, beyond the the armor that Baith gave you, beyond the blacksmith's apron and robes of Froderick that you're wearing, beyond the gloves, uh, and all the makeshift sort of trappings of of humanity that you've placed upon yourself this rain is beating down on the the body that is you you've had a lot of revelations recently and one of them is that you need to do something uh, about this person who is trapped in this sort of in-between state um, here on the, the midpoint of the cobbled causeway so you make your way down. What what are you thinking as as you're as you're going down this path? Honestly, 
the feelings that she gave to him when she possessed him, the, the, the feeling of the massive hurt and the massive pain that she was feeling, that is what's driving him to do this because he's never, I mean, like he doesn't know that. And, and in fact, it's taught him more than any of his experiences have, like of what true suffering feels like. And this is, this is some deep shit. So he's just, he's not really thinking about the consequences of his action. I mean, this could very well be the end of six. I, I recognize that because this mother, this, this person almost killed six uh, before. And, or well, I guess technically Archie did, but uh, I think like with her not having something to attack with his body, he's wanting to kind of, the reason he didn't invite Archie to come over here because he would just attack Archie again if he was possessed. So this might give him a chance to speak with her more and maybe help. That's kind of the whole thought process here. You're also like, assuming uh, that Archie would have let you go. No, Archie yeah, probably yeah. wouldn't have. Archie would be like, you fucking dumbass. It would have been just like Father Dale running back in, in, into the uh, uh, fray to fight the robot to save the building. Quite possible. Yeah, it would have been like, uh, I, I saved your life and then you just throw it away again. I can't do an Archie. I exactly, saved your, yeah. brother, I saved your, I saved your life and then you just throw it away. He doesn't do a too bad that's, cockney accent. That's actually. a bad, yeah. With this That's the only accent that I can do. Yeah. Hey, you want to hear? Sp- you want to hear Spanish? Hey, bro, I saved your life in English. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, bro, I saved your life. Yeah, French. Bro, bro, wait, wait, bro. What is, what's your American accent sound like? Uh, hey, bro, I. Should. Okay, yeah, there you go. All right, <laughs> look, I we're like sticking it. to it. We gotta uh, commit to the bit. Commit to the bit. Commit commitment. Um, what you have committed to is this renewed sense of resolve to try and figure this this problem out. Um, You've also committed to a terrible idea, but yeah, <laughs> yeah P- well, potentially, potentially. I, that's okay. I agree, kind so, of. You, I mean, there's there's a there's a bit of self doubt as you reach the bottom of the stairs and you begin coming across the cobbled causeway. The waves at this point um, of the the water rushing through the wound have gotten tumultuous. They are uh, crashing against the land part and the uh, wooden bridge that connects to everything here and you can feel a certain amount of responsibility as, as each wave crashes against the side you, you, you feel it's like a heartbeat of you moving closer and closer to this thing that you need to figure out and as you make it towards the center of this land bridge you see the glow of the, the specter in the distance. The feelings that you had before start to kind of rush back. There's, there's like some feeling of connection that you're still getting. And it is just this, this longing to be done with suffering. So you're edging closer and closer to, to just this, this feeling of needing to be towards the end, which is ironic because you've, you've personally been almost to the end of everything. You were in the Drift Realm. You've been to that mid-place where people go before the end of it all. And this person longs to be there in a place where you wanted to escape. And eventually you you make it up towards them. Uh, it is this, once again, this elven woman, this uh, ethereal sort of translucent being floating there in this one position crying on the edge of the cobbled causeway. Try to think of exactly what I want to say here, because I know that I got one chance. It matters. I've met Death. He's waiting for you. That's it? That's what I say. I I know I don't have much time. I keep it succinct. Those are the words that I choose to say to this person. All right, she turns. And once again, this, this visage of this, this elven woman, uh, you can tell that at one point, like, she was beautiful, but this, this ghost has just this, this, however long she's been here, just, so many years of suffering have etched her way, etched its way in, into her form. And she turns towards you, her hollow eyes fixated on you. And for a moment, you can see some sense of humanity returning towards them. Uh, you, can, you can actually see eyes where it was just blackness before. Go ahead and roll persuasion for me. Does this count as helping? I didn't um, say it, that I was trying did, to help her. It did before and it does now. Okay. Because I am 
trying to help her, but I didn't know if I had to say, let me help you or something. You know, <laughs> no, no, no. This my is, thing. Yeah, yeah. So just as a reminder, uh, what, why, why does that matter? Because I get advantage. Oh, I'm so glad I got advantage because it was a 1 and a 15. 15 plus uh, 0. Due to his curse, that acts nope. like a boon. But 15, min- 15 minus 1. Sorry. <laughs> oh, 15 <laughs> minus, okay. You gave me advantage in something that I am terrible at. Terrible That's at. That's kind of well, the point, though. Yeah. No, point. I know. It's, it's, it works out pretty good. So she peers at you, and you can see for a moment that the horrifying visage return. And she begins to rise and quickly rush towards you, but then something stops her. You you can feel this still this lingering connection between you, and there is something inside her that is holding her back, waiting for something more. You have a, another chance to say something else. I felt your pain, and I felt it. It's unlike anything that I've ever experienced. I would like to help you. When you finish, you can see the struggle between her torment and her wanting to to move on to something else in her face. It's like it's twitching back and forth between emotions, and eventually one of them takes hold. And it is a more complacent sense of emotion as she pauses her posture pulls back and she slowly lowers to the ground and this time her feet connect with the wet surface of the cobbled causeway and she begins walking towards you she is longing for what you you were talking about you can tell this much and she's trying to reach through the connection that you had before and you begin to hear some words. It's as if her voice is resonating within you. My name is Serena Motz. I am a priestess of Wunmuth Dane. I have been trapped here for so long. So many people have passed me by as I stayed attached, drowning suffering and it doesn't end and I just need and you can see her face kind of twitch back to that of anger someone to understand she continues to approach slowly I'm guessing that not many people survive encounters with you because I completely understand your suffering at least but I've got to know, why has Tash not called your name? When you, first when you mention uh, others suffering, you can see flicks of light all around. And there's a multitude of them. And you get the feeling of of sort of connections of suffering throughout. Um, You surmise that these might be the souls of those who have been taken by this ghost. And then when you mention Tash she stops and with this foot hitting against the ground you can actually hear the sound of a of a bare foot hitting against wet stone and she stares at you Tash has not called me I met Tash I escaped Tash it seems like you want to go where I escaped from She nods. Maybe I could put in a good word. She cocks her head to the side and says, I am not free because I am trapped. I've been trapped for so long. I understand. Where? Where is your body trapped? She cocks her head and then her whole body without a single portion turning uh, her whole body turns and floats and points in the water nearby of course fuck me of course you point in the water yeah. <laughs> fuck me 
I'm a robot. You don't gotta breathe, man. You're good. No problem. <laughs> I'm a robot. You don't, I don't. You don't. You don't, you don't sink. <laughs> I do. I would. I'm made of metal. No, no, does... uh, no. Let's let's be clear here. By the rules and mechanics of D and D five e, you still have a swim speed, so ah, you can got it. you so, can you can swim. I can swim. Okay. Can well, swim. This you is, couldn't just I, climb your ass back out. I also don't need to breathe. So there, there, that is a a real big boon for me. That, the, that's uh, the the location where she points. I mean, a, a large wave crashes in and rolls, and you can feel it cascading against your feet. The storm is still brewing outside as she solemnly points to a location on the side of the land bridge. It, she's pointing to the side of the land bridge. Like, is it down in the water, though? It, oh, 100%. She's pointing down okay. towards the water. Okay. Just in case I don't make it back. First of all, it was very nice to meet you. And I'm sorry that we had to meet in such a way as earlier... I hope you liked my body. <laughs> but weird. <Okay. laughs> I realized that. Okay, fuck it. Um, secondly, on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate our interaction? She looks at you very confused. Um, Bye. I jump in the water. <laughs> you can hear. You can hear this. This resonating voice as you dive out into the water. If you don't succeed, you can stay here with me forever. And you swim down deeper and deeper. I need you to roll. Um, You are diving down looking for a potential ancient body. I think that's going to be athletics to try. And and during this current, both of the, the wound rushing through, rushing from north to south as it does, and the storm that's going on. Um, it's going to be a very difficult to try and find something down here. So, uh, I need athletics and I also need a perception check. Both. Okay. Uh, both of those are good for me. Very actually. good. Yes. Okay. Okay. The first one, I, I already said it in my head. The first one's a nat 20. Wow. <laughs> I rolled and a nat 20 athletics. Okay. <laughs> so nat 20 athletics. My very robot good. ass is swimming through water like it's butter. You have, you have. No, uh, no. Cause that would be worse. That would be, that would be worse. <laughs> oh yeah. Like it's jello. Wait, wait. Mm. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> like it's water. Like it's, like it's, like it's water. I am a fish. to water. How about this? Um, I describe myself as something better in the water. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Being is that you don't need to breathe you you dive down into this you keep all your armaments everything on which which sort of begin to drag you and pull you uh you know your your apron and everything in this current that's down here um should be should make it more difficult for you to travel down here but fuck you, i didn't think about that yeah you push forward so hard that would have made it that, thank that god for the net a lot worse yeah i, I would have just taken off my clothes underwater if you started saying that but thank mm. god yeah um no yeah, but regardless of all that you are able to press forward and and i mean you swim so well in these conditions uh the only problem is is finding so what what do you get for that oh. that Here's for that second nat 20 in a row, that guys. Be I, look, golden. I'm pulling the camera off if it shows you, because I know you believe me on one. You won't believe me on two. I'll believe you on two. I'll, you're not going to lie. I won't. Okay, there That's, you go. I mean, it's not terrible. It's an 11. It's not a nat 20. It's 11 plus 5. Plus 5. 16. Okay, 16. Okay. All right. You look around for her body. You think, okay, if if something... Uh, is getting caught here, it would most likely be on the land bridge. Like, there's no other structures down here. So you're rapidly turning. Um, the only thing that you're fighting against, not is it's not your breath. It is just the current that could quickly take you away were you to pause for a second. So you pull yourself back and you try and maintain your position as you scan the sides. Of... I use my flashlight eyes like... Uh... No. Uh, <laughs> you... Yeah, you do use your normal ass regular <laughs> robot eyes and you scan the side of the, the cobbled causeway and you do end up seeing uh, shredded cloth um, being tugged across the, the, the structures that are holding this bridge up uh, in the distance. All right, I go to the shredded cloth for sure. 
For sure, you, for sure. You start swimming. It, that. it looks like a. I mean, does it look like just cloth, or can I tell it's like a dress? Right, or something? right now you could just tell that it's cloth. With, okay. it, with that, now, 16, I'm going to go. You could just to tell that. it's cloth. It's okay. just it's just interesting enough. Like that looks like okay, maybe that's yeah. Close. I could have just skipped this whole interaction. Be like, okay, you see it and you go find it because that's that's what it is. You no, can no, see no, pinned, it's very good. Yeah, yeah, you you see pinned against this this rock stru- this natural rock structure, uh, this skeletal body, any flesh that remains. I mean, a, a, a limb is missing. There's there's been so much that has been washed away by time. The strips of fabric are barely hanging on at this point, and it is just this skeleton with uh, a few remaining bits and baubles and cloth pinned against the wall down here. You can see the chains that they use to keep her tied up are uh, still wrapped around her wrists and legs. And it's this that's really keeping her tied to the stone. Okay. I put them, I, I take as as much as I can and put it into my satchel, which I definitely still have on because I did not take it off. Okay. Okay. All right. So you, um, like the, the, like the things or the bones, I'm t- the bones. I want all of her body, every, every part of her body that I can reasonably get. Right. Okay. So as you start to mess with the chains and try and unhook it here, I mean, you realize that what's attached is still going to probably be attached if you just try and swim up. Um, I mean, being as you, you're not breathing, you have time to brace yourself against the stone and pull these things off. So instead of like trying to take parts and stuff into your satchel, you just grab onto this. Oh, I just grab and, it. Okay. Yeah. And, and you kick as much as you can and reach the surface of the water. Um, you are buffeted against the side of the cobbled causeway a couple times as you try and right yourself and, and bring this skeleton up. But you eventually do and you lay it on the stone as their rain cascades around you. My next goal is to take this body and bury it. So I need to not only scale the wall, but I need to scale it with the body. I cannot leave this behind down here. Okay. Um, you bring yourself back up on the, the causeway, and you lift this skeleton um, in reference. Is there, like a, is there like a fucking ramp? Did I just jump off the side? You just jumped uh, off the side. Like, it's not oh, high okay. above it. It's a few feet. Oh, I thought it was, like, high above it. I was going to scale no, the no, wall no. back up to no, the bridge. Yeah, you're, okay. You did, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> it's a few. It's a few. Because, yeah, remember the, I thought you were cliff diving? Yeah, the waves. I said the waves were crashing over it. It's, it's pretty low. So when you say Land I brought bridge. it back up to the causeway, I'm basically standing in front of the ghost again. Yeah, you're standing in front of the ghost again. Who, who did this to you? She is standing there when you come back up and lay the body, uh, the skeleton, down on the ground. And she begins approaching you with an arm out, and she pauses with her hand in front of your face, sort of uh, seeing if it's okay for her to touch you. I don't think Six understands, <laughs> but he's just going to stand there and look at her. Okay, w- without Stone you moving, face. Um, she, she does step forward and connects her uh, hand to your forehead. And... What you see is is an ancient people. They have things that aren't as well developed as, as things are now. You can recognize that easily. And it is sort of an island lifestyle. Um, you, get, you do get the feeling uh, of where this is. This is an island to the north of the wound. And this is a place, these thoughts and feelings, you, you can feel Woodmouth Dane. Um, which is the only, uh, the only island up to the north, directly above the wound. And what you get from this is she was a priestess meant for something important. That her thoughts just deal with importance, uh, a duty, a job. It doesn't seem like sacrificial. It just seems like life devotion, and these. Dark figures come one night. The the faces that you see aren't... They're, they're disconnected. They're unrecognizable. They're demonic in a sense that they just look twisted. But Yeah, they're they, just blobs. They're just her attackers. She doesn't necessarily right. know who they were. Got it. Exactly. So she is... Uh, you feel fear. And it is this fear that is, that is driven into you as she is tied up in her chains and try... Uh, and, and pulled away. And eventually she is in 
the wound and rushing in the water and struggling her way to just stay afloat and she is trying so hard and she manages to stay afloat until she is uh, pinned against cobbled causeway and just taken under by the current and that is where she passes she pulls her hand away and you can see these sort of glowing tears streaking down her face she is at this point without the anger streaking her face quite beautiful it's I haven't met too many people I haven't met too many beings I can tell you that I have not met many people with your amount of suffering and if we were in different states of being I think I would like you very much I'm going to bury your body now Will you please tell Taish that I said hello from the other side, and I'll see him again soon. Also, I'm sure, and you'll know this when I when you see it, your paintings are going to be very interesting. She smiles at, at that, and you can see her form sort of shift, um, and she starts to disappear. But she points uh, a finger down at a locket wrapped around her neck and puts both hands out and gestures towards you. Please, to remember some part of this and carry on. I, uh, I take the locket off and put it on in front of her. I will never sell that thing. It's mine forever. I love it. Okay. I love it, and I love you. <laughs> uh, she, she she crosses her hands over her heart, and she slowly disappears in these, these specks as they flutter off. And all the little lights that kind of flicker on and off around you begin to disperse as well. The, the storm lessens. It is just a dreary rain as you pick the, the skeleton up and make your way back to the stairs and make your way back up. You find a... A clearing in the trees nearby the cave where Archie is, a place that you think would be a decent place to rest and spend the next few hours digging a grave and placing her in it. You bury her. Uh, are there any last words you'd like to say? Uh, to the most beautiful elf I've ever met. Oh, I've never met another elf. Not to my knowledge, at least. Oh, wait, Bates an elf. To the most beautiful elf I've ever met. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, you, you, you feel uh, uh, a smile in this, this dwindling connection that uh, eventually severs as you, you end your sort of midnight vigil. You make your way back to the camp. Wait, wait. I hurriedly go to erase the note because I made it back. I want to I wanna scribble it out. Okay. As you make your way back, you do take a, a look down at this locket. Um, it is a rusted oval locket made of silver. You spend some time trying to remove some of the rust to get it to open, and it eventually does. And when you look at it, it reveals pieces of parchment that are long faded by the water. So you you can't tell what at one point was on this. Give me an arcana roll, please. That's a seven plus five, 12 total. This thing is magic. Oh, the locket or the paper? The locket. Locket. I figured as much. I just wanted to make sure. Yep. Okay. So um, I'm running back to the campfire. I'm running back to the campsite to erase the note. Okay. So that Archie doesn't know anything. All right. As you, as you're coming back, you're not trying to stealth or anything. You're trudging. Chunk, chunk, chunk. Um, Archie, give me a, your your passive perception is what seventeen, yes. Uh, let's say this has taken you three hours to go down to her, come back up, dig a hole, bury her. It is approaching sunrise, Archie. You have regained everything from a long rest. Your point of exhaustion is gone, and you're waking up seeing very cold embers. Of a fire, no six nearby, but a note that you find 
pretty quickly as you hear clung, 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 and see six approaching nearby. Is there any, like, actual heat to the embers at all, or is it completely out? Completely out. Uh, all right. Um... Don't read that note. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It was nothing. I just went for, oh. <laughs> okay. Do you actually yell that at me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So Archie looks at six. He's got the note in his hand. He goes, all right, mate. Don't go get so twisted up about it. And he crumbles it up and tosses it over his shoulder. Okay. It hits on the side of the cave wall. Uh, six, you make your way back over. And Archie is- Would you lay me a note because you were looking at the perimeter? <laughs> Uh, yes, I just wanted you to know where I went, and I stomp on the note a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Six, are you all right? You got mud all over your feet. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, Six is really muddy, really wet, really gross looking. Oh, oh yeah, it's... Uh, mm, I, uh, I went and saved the ghost. <laughs> he just says it. <laughs> I, I couldn't let it go, Archie. I went and saved the ghost. I can't lie. I mean, I mean, I that did. That was it. stupid, but hey, whatever, mate. High five. I'm not your father. You do what you want. High five. Yeah, sure. Well, did you do it? Did you save her? I did. I buried her over well, there. All right then. Her name was. Why you brought her back here? What the fuck's wrong with you, mate? She's a fucking ghost. She tried to kill no, me. No, her body. I buried her body so that she would not. Ghosts follow their body. Her. What's wrong with you? She's passed on. Look, Archie, I would never. All right, I would that's never it. Leave I'm not staying in this fucking cave one second longer with a fucking ghost who possesses a robot and tries to kill me. <laughs> he begins packing his stuff up hurriedly. You know what? That's fair. I appreciate your understanding, Archie. Uh, what was her name again, Tanner? Serena Motts. Uh, now that you've mentioned, uh, you know, her possessing things with souls. I, hey, there's some evidence that Six has a soul. Hooray! Oh, yeah. Oh, that went, that went right. That goes right over Archie's head. Right over Archie's head. There you go. Okay. All right. So um, you guys are operating all, all, most on full capacity. Archie is back up after a long rest. Six. I mean, the, the funny, like, exhaustion. Does exhaustion take time, like, more time than just a long rest to, to wear off? I think it does, but it doesn't matter. So... You guys he had uh, enough time to get rid of the exhaustion point, is what you're saying? I mean, it n- maybe I don't remember the rules. Don't don't at me. Don't at me, listeners. Adam. Don't at me. I don't remember the exhaustion rules. Exhaustion, you just it's flavor. So you guys pack up your camp and begin to make your way back south. After another long day of travel, you see the town of Leyland on the horizon and make your back way. Make your back way. Make your way back. (laughs) Make your way back into town. Uh, Making my way downtown. Walking fast. Pacing. (laughs) There's just a bard at the edge of town coming up. Sounds exactly like Archie. Yeah. I was going to say sounds exactly like Sarah Bareilles. Yeah, yeah, that too. Um, It's like a combination of the two. Archie, this is... Honestly, I... I, I didn't know how it felt to long to see something, but what a sight for sore eyes, am I right? I don't really know what sore eyes are, actually. Archie looks down at his clothes. All right, first, well, I'm, I, I, need, I, I need clean clothes. So let's go see Bath, so get me fucking money, and I can get me some not muddy clothes. Yeah, this is actually the dirtiest I've ever seen you, Archie. I'm not happy. I'm pretty dirty, too. Maybe I should get some clothes? I haven't really thought about it, but I could probably use some new digs. I think that's what the children say nowadays. (laughs) Yeah, you're real hip, Six. All right, let's go. I do have hips. (laughs) Wow. Wow. And they don't lie as you make your way into <laughs> Leyland. <laughs> that was so good.
Hello, dear listener. This is Will, a.k.a. The Voice of Six. Thank you so much again for listening to this, our eighth episode in our very first campaign, The Never There. If you want to find out more about the world of Yaset and the continent of Lear, you can find a bunch of nerdy world-building info at netherrealm.com. That's N-O-T-H-E-R realm.com. Our next episode comes out in two weeks on November the 7th. And if you are enjoying the podcast, follow us on your favorite platform so you don't miss any of the episodes or the bonus content we're releasing regularly. Thank you again for listening. Enjoy the rest of the episode. Hello children and welcome to the midpoint scene of this particular episode. Oh no, I broke the fourth wall. How naughty of me. But let me tell you this. You know what would be great? Sharing the fucking podcast because I need to spread the religion of everywhere in every realm possible. So if you could pretty please do that for me, I would bestow upon you so many wonderful gifts cursed gifts but wonderful nonetheless i'll uh, i'll see you uh when i see you i suppose bye Uh, you guys make your way into Leyland. Uh, first stop is to Outward Enterprises to talk to Baith for some money. Yes. Okay. So you make your way to 12 Edge so Street. Chroma the- always collects his debt. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, you, you've, you find your way easily. You've been there plenty of times. Um, and uh, you go to open the door. It is open. Wait. You- oh. I punched the door. <laughs> Roll strength. I got, a, I got a fucking one. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. You go oh. to punch the door. Boom. Uh, your wrist bends and it almost to sprain. Um, oh, for fuck's sake, what's this door made out of? Uh, and and Baith opens the door and looks at you, looks at the door and goes, the door is reinforced. What are you doing? I'm knocking. You know, you should really not have a door that hurts people who knock. Well, you really should not knock so hard. It is not this kind of thing. Where you, well, it's reinforced. You just... How are you going to not hear me if I don't knock hard? He does have a point. I don't think you have a point. This is just how doors work. Like, I must... Listen, mate, I'm a scientist. <laughs> what, what, is your, what is your particular field that you are a scientist Door in? knocking, all right? I, that is very specialized. It is. Listen, babe, we've been through a lot. It's yes, good you to look see like you, shit. though. <laughs> hey, is... that's not nice. I mean, it's not, but it, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to lie to my two favorite people, my two new business partners. You have come back. I am so pleased to come in. Let's get you uh, not clean. There is no bath here, but come on. And he uh, opens the door up for the two of you. Um, okay, go on. The, the two of you enter, and he, uh, he hurriedly walks over, um, pours you a, a couple cups of, of hot tea, and uh, brings it over to you and says, so, tell me, uh, were you successful? I really should raise your rates, mate. You should raise them. I paid very well for this particular I, I should double it. I should make you double it for what we went through. You've got no fucking idea how awful it was. Why don't you tell me? Six, he- tell him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see... Uh, and he gives a, an entire re- re- he gives an entire synopsis synopsis synopsis, synopsis. Uh, he gives an entire synopsis of the of the events. Do you want me to do you want me to do that? Yeah, I want or? you I want you to do okay. that. I want you to do that. Okay, so from the beginning, firstly, we found the cart that brought in the the robots into into your town. It was hidden. It had tainted spring fire on it, and from there. We met with Anlin Tassat. Anlin brought us in uh, and showed us the way through the caves. At every key point, Archie just nods his head. Ibarra was very quiet, but I love her. Um, 
<laughs> I like her. <laughs> love, I, I've started to realize love is maybe too strong. Um, And then from there, we met St. Sebastian underneath the, uh, underneath the wound. He gave us powers. My mask Archie won't come off now. Hand. Yeah, Archie's got a cool new tattoo, and I and he can grow a tail. I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have a crack in my mask, and it won't come off. And then we met Randy. What he he threw bombs specifically at the Black Hole Collective. They were Skittling much slower than bomb. us. It was fantastic. Actually, I threw the bomb. It was a perfect hit right in the middle of his black. And that's what I learned to high five. <laughs> Wait, I, the Black Hole Collective was involved? Mm, they were. I thought they had the quest from you. Weren't they on our side? What? No, the Black Hole Collective hasn't been in town for like months. Uh, excuse me. Wait, hold yeah, on. Yeah, what? they like they uh, they they came around saying that they might need to, to to put a group out here to try and like do some quests, and they were part of the, uh, you know, they showed the adventuring contract, but then they never sent anybody. There was Wait, no what, team uh, that came out here. So who, that, for months, who, two weeks ago, when we were in town, you remember that, right? Yes. Who killed the robots? Yeah. Well, you did. I, I was ahead in the bag. I mean, I guess uh, he looks. For a moment, there's this this strained look of, of thinking on his face. No, I mean, Archie Archie killed the robots. There was uh, there was confrontation, and there, some things happened, and then we met, and that was pretty much. You know it. anybody by the name of Strickland by any chance? Honest Company, Black Hole Collective. None of that rings a bell, no. Strict? Yes, that means they're fucking gone, Six! Wait, hold on. I, I agree, that could be good news. <laughs> but, you know, what we were in, Archie, that's not something that I personally would wish on many people. Uh, probably zero people, actually. What? I was Sorry, I wasn't listening. I was too fucking excited to know that that douchebag was gone. He, he did say some very mean stuff. Okay, well, wait, so, oh no, didn't we leave Ranji with him? No, them? we told him to run after he did what he did. I hope that he did. Okay, so, the the Black Hole Collective is, they, they're still a thing, right? Ah, the Black Hole Collective is a large group of fucking corporatist adventuring assholes. They, they, they like... They make contracts, they set up teams, they go out in places, they're all named after black things. Uh, so, you know, they, this is like, it's a normal thing for them to Archie. be in places, but they just haven't so, come wait, out hold, here yet. All right, hold on. One second. Yes. So nobody ever came by here and stole the contract from under my nose. That's what you're telling me. You gave us the contract. Uh, once again, you kind of see like the, like just the strained thinking on his face. No. No, there was... You came by, and it was fine. I gave you the contract like we agreed the night before, and you came the next morning, and you took it, and you went off, and you, you left, and you've now come back with, with the, the evidence that there was some guy named Dargo Malkat up there, and then he was doing experiments. I mean, that was, that was, the, that was it, yes? Well, I got one more question for you. Yes. Who's the guy who leads people to the Splinterlands? You know his name by any chance? The guy that took you to the Splinterlands? Yeah, you know, there's a house posted up there. Looks like I lived there. Uh, Small there's... fella. I think it was a gnome. Didn't really see him up close. There is... There is no one that takes anyone through the Splinterlands, as far as I know. Okay, so uh, I guess let me continue the story. After we saw the Black Hole Collective, which you don't remember, it's fine. They weren't there, maybe. Maybe you have know, us mistaken. Oh, no, they were definitely there. Hit, they'd square in the middle of the chest with a bomb full of skittlings, whatever the hell that is. Some about poisonous spiders, millipedes, centipedes, that. Well, either way, we met with uh, Professor Argo Malcott. He's from Casterhaven. Have you ever heard of him? 
this name is not familiar to me, no. Well, that's that's fair. No, no strained thinking there. No, none that you can tell. Okay, he might not. He might just not know them. Um, and then from there we met Death. You specifically met Tej. Wait, hold on. He's missing a. You're missing a key part here. Six. There's a big giant black fog that consumed everything. Came out of some woods or something. Flew towards the tower where Argo Malcott was in. All the lights flickered and was some weird bright purple. They broke. He freaked out. We threw some bombs at it. It consumed us. Uh, we went some weird paintings. Don't worry about that part. That part's not important. Uh, yeah, we met Navarre. Back out. Hmm? Navarre. Don't forget about Navarre. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, Peyton kid. Whatever. Anyway. Wait, 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 wait. Pause. Navarre. That is not a common name. You met... Navarre is the name of the God of Truth. Oh, shit. Wait. Say that. Say that again. Navar is the name of is the common the common religion. It is the name of the God of Truth. You met the God of Truth. Like what, this is this is crazy. These things that you were telling me. This black thing came and it took you, and you went to another place. You met death. You met Tesh, the embodiment of death, and then you you met Niv- You met two gods in one place. Well, we did see the uh, whole River of Souls thing he had going on too. Or- Everybody was below the surface. You couldn't touch them. He forced, tried to force Argo down. I don't know what happened to him. We took off. Wait, wait. Uh, hold, hold that thought for a moment. Uh, he walks behind his desk and opens up a chest and he starts uh, rummaging through some things. And he pulls out a book uh, and he comes back and he flips through the book. He says, okay, like you, you met death and you went to a place with a bunch of waves. <laughs> so you're, you're telling me that there is a thing that took you to... Uh, and he points to this page, uh, and it reads, The Drift. He says, you, something took you to the drift. Yeah, that, exactly. You, <laughs> you went to the drift, and then you, you, f- you found Teish. You found the gallery. That's a thing. You mentioned paintings, and he points it to the, to the Pacific pa- uh, specific oh, passage. Oh, yes, that place was very Yeah, and I've seen what's in your past base, and it's not pretty. Um, at that, he lowers the book and he looks up at you very serious there's no more but archie we didn't look his face past he looks Damn it, sex well uh he, he looks confused uh this did you look at my paintings or not no i didn't look at your paintings I mean, we did not see your paintings what am i saying you guys you could not travel to the drift and meet tesh and navar i mean the drift is above all else. That is that is crazy talk. Everything. Oh, so that end- that a six. That's why they were all below the level then, because it's above everything. Makes sense. Makes sense. It does. Yeah, understood. I mean, it, it. We definitely were there, but I don't know how to explain it. Okay, say this was some sort of shared fever dream while you were trying to find things. Please continue on with this epic quest. Did you okay. not feel the quake? In the Splitlands, biggest one in years. There was a tremor here. Uh, Largest is... quake in the Splitlands in the last three or four decades, roughly. Who told you this? Ranji, the goblin. Well, that is the biggest one to come before he was ever born. Also, oh. don't don't forget we were there. We, nah, we felt it. the quake. I mean, a large earthquake. I, we did feel tremors here. So I imagine that that might be actually true. I'm just very curious of all of these. Look, you came back. You made your way from here to there. You come back with information. What exactly was going on in Leyland Ruins? Research. For? Robots. Like you. Wait, like, hold on. Didn't you call like them something else? Um, I don't remember, honestly. It, the, 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 the semantics of what they were called aside, so there was more... Basically, the things that attacked Leyland were being built or researched or created there. Well, more actually, for... they weren't built to attack Leyland. They were built to come retrieve something. And apparently somebody got in their way or something. I'm fairly certain that something was me. My head. He was specifically looking for me. He had a very big interest in me. And now I must find a person named Cantelli. Have you ever heard of Kentelli? This name, I, I don't know it. Ah, uh, well, 
I will say this, and his his face scrunches for a moment uh, as he closes the book that he has. I, I was good thinking that if you came back and you were successful in finding out the information and I found you believable, then maybe we could enter into a sort of business partnership. Uh, I am on the edge at this point. Like, I, you know, there is a lot that you have brought back to me that I am sort of... Uh, have you ever heard of Are a you ghost? calling me a liar, Bass? I'm not necessarily calling you a liar. We all have our own experiences. Have you ever heard of a ghost on the bridge of... Uh, up north on the crossing between... Over, over the wound? There is another bridge on a crossing to the north? Yes. Huh. I mean, no, I have, I've not heard of a crossing or a ghost. It's probably because it's haunted. Well, Perhaps. it was haunted. Was haunted, excuse me. It was. I fixed it. Is it no longer? No, buried. Not crazy robot Passed here on. into that one. I told her to tell Tash hi, because I met him. You need I'm a robot, s- I can't lie. You need... That's unfortunate. If uh, it was a fever dream, it must have been a crazy fever dream. Listen, I will give you a bit of advice. Um, as someone who has been on the precipice of meeting death so many times, you maybe should not send them so many messages. Well, to be fair, he said he'd come for us when he was supposed to, and I mean, you can't really stop death. Yeah, death comes for everyone. Uh, one last question. I mentioned St. Sebastian. Uh-huh. Have you ever heard of him? There are many saints in many different religions. Yep. You ever heard of a religion that sounds like... <laughs> sounds like you clearing your throat? No. Oh, all right. Uh, that's what he said to us, but he said it was of a dying God. He's the last uh, worshiper of a dying God. Do you know of any dying gods? No, there are no, there are no dying gods. There are the, the two... Yeset and Ramid, there are the Ascendant, which there are quite a few, and then a few people know of the Antithians, but they are, uh, no one really worships them. They, well, death is actually one of them, is one of the Antithians. Well, then let's keep this concise. Since part of our story is unbelievable, and I can understand why, just using my logical brain, Castor Haven was doing research on... Forced beings, it is no longer happening. It will not be happening anymore. There is so much. In, I was going to say a short bit of travel, but it was a long distance from here to there and there to back. (sighs) Look, I am not going to say that what you are saying is not true. I am just going to say that it is all very unlikely. However, we are currently in a position to make a bit of money together. Now, the proposition that I spoke of earlier, I would like... Well, I I was more ready to do this earlier than now, but uh, I, I believe that you are people that get things done. Well, people, I use loosely, that get things done. And... I could go ahead and pay you out 775 either. Dr. Anlin Tassat did contact me, said you helped her through. Didn't know if you made it out on the other side. That means Anlin wasn't taken, Archie. It's good. I like Anlin. Well, yeah, that's like a large distance away from where that thing came from. That thing moved awful fast. I was... Kind it also of fucked off awful fast, too. It did. I guess Black Hole did stick in that general area. Look. I'm sorry. Ignore that. You. This yeah, is no, no problem. Unbelievable stuff for you. Believable for us. Okay. Look. I believe you on what you found there. That is fine. But. You know, the, the, the fanciful flights that you have between there and here aren't that. Don't matter to me. I care about results. You've brought those. So I will still give you this proposition. I can give you the 775. The 750 plus the 25 for helping out Anlin. Or I can give you 400 either. And I will offer a partnership or 
patronage of sorts. Archie, I don't need either. Maybe for some clothes, if you can spare some for me. But this this decision is yours. Oh, I'm listening. Oh, I'm good. All right. I, I like an eye for shrewd business. Shrewd, shrewd, shrewd business. I like an eye for shrewd business. Sorry, I mess up on some words sometimes. I will offer you 400, and with my patronage, you get a, a permanent place at the edge. So, rooms, board. So, you will remain comfortable here in Leyland as you go out and, and set about your quests. I will also offer, and I can't believe I'm doing this at this point, two horses and access to my personal stock, where you can find, you know, any sort of things you need for adventures. What do you say? I've never ridden a horse before, Archie. That sounds dope as fuck. (laughs) Archie squints and looks at Baith. Let's the offer hang in the air for a little bit. Oh, yeah, brother, sounds good. All right, let's do that. Okay, he reaches out his hand. Shaky, shaky. All right, you guys shake on it, uh, and he actually, um, as you're talking about the finer details of the offer, he leads you back towards uh, a back room, and in it you can see what looks like any throwable weapons or ranged weapons, uh, ammunition that you might need, um, along with... Uh, basically refills for everything that's in your pack. So anything that you would typically have in your backpack is located in here. So instead of going out and buy, buy rations between every quest, you can come and refill here. It makes it easy for a fucking podcast. Yeah, it is. It's a very good idea. Thank you. DM. I'm a, Thank I'm you. a genus and a species. All I right. get a crossbow. I take that immediately. No, you don't get a crossbow. He doesn't have crossbows in here, but he, he has light crossbow crossbows. Bolts. He has crossbow bolts. He has a total crossbow. Give me that. Motherfucker, you'd have to go buy a crossbow. I take six hand axes. Nice. Okay. Wait, do you have, you have, you have, you have hand axes. No, you had javelins. I know, but I wanted to change them up for hand axes. Fuck it, you do that. Cool. That is reasonable. You could take as many crossbow bolts as you want. I take crossbow bolts. I take okay. 20 of them. All right. I leave, I leave the javelins. Okay. Uh, you set the javelins down. You get yourself set up with some throwing axes. Um, Six takes a bunch of crossbow bolts, and as he's packing them away, he turns and notices in the corner, covered in cobwebs, a light crossbow. Oh, dope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get one. <laughs> I don't feel like having a shopping for a freaking crossbow. I was, I was about to shop for one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So you guys have agreed to um, a patronage with Baith. So now you are basically a part of Outward Enterprises. Um, you get access to to what I mentioned before. Um, Baith shows you the sort of uh, room set up as long as you're going out and doing quests and coming back and resting. Your downtime can be spent at the edge where you get a uh, comfortable room and board, separate rooms. The horses are connected at the stable uh, of the edge, um, and you can you can fill up between every mission. Really, it's it's downtime time at this point. Before I leave Baith, I would like to ask him one more question. Baith, um, do you know of a map that maybe shows powerful beings and where they are? I don't really have much access to magical things here but i mean i imagine some things like that exist as sort of a warning signal or something like that do you know of anybody that in leyland that would know about magical items and i kind of touch my necklace that i have there are few people in leyland who would be able to help you out we sometimes have traveling wizards that come into town that uh, can help identify things uh, that people find off to the east but um, really, the only person that you can that can really help you in town is uh, is probably going to be Elias Finch uh, at Doting Doublets and other Grateful Garments. No worries, we're headed there next. <laughs> we need some fresh new digs. That's what the children say. <laughs> Someone may or may not have mentioned that what I'm wearing is a bit outdated, and I, I didn't really appreciate it. I mean. It is a particular style. You can be a fan of any sort of... Uh... He looks you up and down. Yeah, I mean, pinstripes you're, might be out. You're not helping the situation I, at all. 
uh, I, I come from a different culture. It's not, it is the cultural dif- differences. Oh, insulting is a cultural difference, hi. If it makes you feel better, I think you look nice. Thanks, Six. I can always count on you. I would say it is dapper AF. That, that's my words. I don't trust you. <laughs> Wait, that's my words. It says Will. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, uh, you guys. Uh, you guys sign a couple agreements with Baith. Um, you you quickly. I add to the agreement oh. that I am not responsible for anything that any negative uh, consequences that come with entering a partnership with me. He initials it. Okay. I uh, when I sign, I just sign what the fuck ever. But uh, I use my uh, welding stuff, and it just rips the paper all up when I do it. Um, Baith. Uh, points to a different spot on the page and, and hands you a pin. Please. Like, an actual signature would be much preferred than whatever welding utensil you are trying to use. Just put the number six, right? Like, that is fine. I I think I do know how to draw the number six. Okay. I try my best. I, I'm... I press real hard on that paper. You can decide whether it rips or not. Give me Give me a strength roll. Oh, it's only five. I put uh, so it's a decent signature. Uh, it's a little uh, a, a little uh, hard edged, but it's a six. You guys sign up this contract. He uh, hands you the keys at uh, that you could use at the edge, and you guys head out. Um, I'm guessing over to uh, doting doublets and other grateful garments. Absolutely. All right. You guys make your way towards the center Finally, of Finally, we go to this sto- to the store. Taters wanted me to it? go to. Can you since... can say it for me? Say it for me. Doting doublets. Doting doublets. Doting doublets and other grateful garments. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate the shit out of you. You guys make I your way. I remember that for six episodes at this point, so, you, or whatever you, it was. It's good because it's the best store in town. When you come up to the storefront, it is this large door with an arch at the top. The sign that's hanging out front is this sort of... Um, what what are the you remember the Pokemon cards that you turn uh and they they shine what is that called yeah holographic um, holographic Hol- yeah 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 so it is on this it's sort of this holographic as it moves in the wind um like tail coats on it and uh, and in this very lovely font that is carved into the wood here doting doublets and other grateful garments it's it's fantastic it's the best name you've ever heard you go in the door the bell up top rings and you walk in to find all of these colorful clothing i mean some of them are regular adventurers looking garb but most of the things that seem to be placed higher above it are these colorful garments these sort of suits uh, with with tails at the end of them some sort of fanciful double-breasted coats you see over on the side some top hats and canes, things that match all these motifs of sort of this fanciful, rich people looking shit, but but if you're a little bit more flamboyant is what you get in here. And you see off behind the countertop... Um, a, Boy, a this little, is what's in style today. <laughs> yeah, well, at least here. You see this little hand pop up behind the counter putting stuff up on a shelf... Uh, behind the counter um, and they don't seem to have noticed you as you've come in they are uh, humming a tune off to themselves and singing their own song as they're filling shelves I punched the door no, I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> don't worry Archie I got this one and I open the door like a normal person <laughs> oh the door you guys are already in it he just didn't hear the bell um, oh, okay but when when you guys kind of stomp around the corner, the, the stacking of shelves stops and you can hear the sound of a stool being moved across the floor and this uh, halfling uh, jump up onto the stool and look out at both of you. What you see on the other side of the counter is this halfling with short curly blonde hair and a violet double-breasted tailcoat that is longer than he is uh, it would drape to the floor were he walking and he looks out at you and says hello and welcome to doting doublets and other grateful garments I am Elias what can I do for you we need some new digs that's what the children say the children I don't know where you learned that you, there's li- we haven't seen a child 
Also, the children don't shop here. We haven't seen a child. There's no children in this town. In fact, I don't know anybody got here. There's, I mean, people here fuck. There's plenty of children. Well, they must. Look at them. They're all fucking brick houses. Is this guy, like, even for a halfling just fucking... No, this guy, okay. Elias uh, is not is not ripped. He is a normal-looking okay. halfling. Uh, I see you might be in need of some new clothing. And he looks you up and down, Archie. And then he looks over at you, Six. I mean, and, and just a whole new thing here. Just give me bigger w- of whatever he gets. We're a team. We got a match. Twinsies. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm going to need, I guess, a modern version of what I'm wearing, if possible. Oh, I mean, I like the slightly retro look, but we can certainly modernize it. How do you feel about color? I hate it. You hate it. <laughs> black on black, then? <laughs> Except for crimson. I show him the best. Crimson. Oh, that is... You know what? I have a couple pieces of fabric that I can probably bring that out with if you're looking for a, a sort of crimson suit. Are we looking for single-breasted or double-breasted? Single, please. Got to be able to move. Mm. It's a shame. I think uh, double-breasted would really accentuate your chest very well. But that's fine. Uh, and he'll hop down and move over to the side and actually start um, swiping through a nearby uh, a coat rack. Uh, and you, you lose sight of him as he's moving through the stuff. Listen, I have a couple of things here that you might enjoy. Are you looking for something, well, I don't want to say normal, uh, magical or non-magical? Uh, Archie looks in his little gold bag and he goes, probably non-magical considering what I'm walking around with. He peers around the side of the clothes that he's rummaging through. How much you got? Yeah, around a 450 mark or so. Huh. All right. The Irregulars. Uh, and he'll walk over to another stack and start uh, pulling through the clothes there. And he actually does pull out a uh, crimson tailcoat. It is single-breasted, but it does have uh, longer tails at the end. Uh, for you, they'd probably come down to the top of your thighs. But he brings it around and looks at it and looks at you. What you notice about this particular coat is that it has six arms. I... I know it's, it seems strange, but um, would you just try it on for me? All right. Okay. He, he tries it on. Uh, you put it on, and it it, it fits very well. Um, if you want it to be perfect, you might have to get a little bit of tailoring, but it's almost as close as you could ask for off the rack. He looks up at you and says, Now that with the vest... Very nice. I mean, the the black lines on the sides of it going with the... Mm. Tell you this. uh, Go ahead and and bring your arms out to the side and snap both fingers for me. All right. You snap, and what happens is you can feel a tug at your ribcage, basically. And you can see the other arms fill and raise... And you can see these ethereal hands poking out of the other four sleeves next to you. That's, that's a pretty cool trick. I call that, you're going to love this, I call that the coat of arms. <laughs> <laughs> that's clever. What a stupid, that's clever. what a stupid, <laughs> that's so dumb. <laughs> It's so bad. That's, that's so good. No, you keep that. Um. So <laughs> you that entire setup was for that fucking stupid ass joke. <laughs> I love it. Good joke. How long did you have that in your head? Since the first so time I introduced the fucking name of the store. Okay, that's great. All right. He's been holding that joke. <laughs> for oh, fucking, that's great. For oh, fucking seven episodes, he's been holding that joke. Oh, I have. Oh, and the months before, this was early that's on so in the creation bad. process. <laughs> so, oh, man. how did you? How did you keep that in without having a fucking annual? Uh, oh <laughs> my god. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh. I gotta wipe the tears off. 
Uh, for the record, however, Archie's <laughs> coat cannot be pointed in its tails. It has to be flat-tailed, more similar to an overcoat, not necessarily like a court coat. Okay. Just, yeah, just yeah. to clarify. That's fine. Uh, look, I, I, can, I, can see, I can see a little bit of doubt. Um, the, the, the fit that you have on everything else, uh, the straight lines might not suit itself so much for a tailcoat. I could have that be a little bit more function over form if you'd like. But... You know, I, I like your cut, and I think I could part with that particular piece for three fifty, unless you were looking for something else. Um, and, and as you're kind of feeling this thing out and moving your arms, I'll give you a little info. Uh, so this is a, a beautiful crimson top coat with black trim. Um, of course, it has the six sleeves that are currently full of these uh, ethereal arms. On the tag that you pull up from the side, it says explicitly this. Once per long rest, the wearer can summon spectral arms in the unfilled sleeves. Each sleeve acts as a mage hand with a range of 15 feet. So, 350 might be something that I could be willing to do. I, I, Archie looks down at the, at the mage hands. All right, but how do I use them? Oh, well, you just snap uh, whenever you want them to you know, come out to play, and then uh, you just sort of think real hard about what you might want them to do. Now, a couple of notes. They can't lift more than 10 pounds. They can't attack for you. They can only interact with specific objects. Really, if you've ever heard of the, uh, the, the spell Mage Hand, it's that specifically, but the range is cut in half. Archie thinks real hard about one of his Mage Hands passing him a hand axe. Yeah, okay, so uh, the bottom hand reaches uh, down towards your side on the back of your pack, pulls out, reaches, uh, hands that hand axe to uh, the hand above it, and that hand hands it to you. Handy. That, I love it. All right, make your deal. Sure. 350 if you put six loops here for me axes, and a little wolf on the chest. Similar to this, and he points at his tattoo. Oh, I thought you were actually going to haggle with me. Sure, that's fine. No, oh, I love this thing. It's perfect. All right. Well, if you don't uh, mind taking it off, I'll go ahead and get it tailored up for you. I have your measurements, and once again, he looks you up and down. So we'll get you all set up. I'll chop those tails off. We'll get it a little bit more squared. Do you prefer shoulder padding or no? None, please, no. Good. I like a good drape on the shoulders. Wonderful. Uh, the buttons on the sleeves are non-functioning, too. That's very important. Otherwise, getting it tailored, it, it just makes it weird. No one wants functional buttons on a suit jacket. It's true, they don't. No. Is there anything else you're looking for? I have plenty of other things. I have uh, little trinkets and items or any other clothing. You're looking for some, some other clothes to match this? I have some pants that I'll throw in there for you if you're looking for all cr uh, crimson. Uh, Archie takes a look down at his pants. How fucked up are they? Um, I mean, they're not too bad. They're currently covered in mud. There's a few tears um, from your last encounter with the ghost. But beyond that, the only thing that you notice is that they don't match the jacket that you're getting anymore. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll Sounds like a good setup. I'll throw them in. You'll have a matching suit on a matching suit on a matching vest. So, uh, you masked man in the robes of Frodrick, a blacksmith's apron and blacksmith's gloves. And he'll reach up and sort of move uh, some of the things out of the way. Armor from the West. Interesting. What can I get you? Armor from the West, is he talking about the uh, armor that uh, I have on me? That Baith gave you, yeah, that you've integrated? Oh, yeah. Well, if I could be completely honest, I'm pretty partial to everything I'm wearing. It was given to me by Father Dell, and I like him. He's very nice. He is a dear man, but his sense of style is... It leaves He's from the Edgefield. That is true. He's uh, okay at chess. Sure. Okay. Do you want clothes? Do you have anything that would fit me? Certainly. I am probably the best tailor you'll meet in, uh, at least Leyland. 
So I can get you set up for whatever you'd like. Uh, if you don't mind, Six, shall I cut in for you here? You know, Archie, I trust you more than I've ever trust anyone in my four years of remembering living. <laughs> he he kind of gives a wide-eyed look to um, Elias. Is that his name? That's it, yeah. What was so his Elias, name again? Like, one more see time. what I mean? <laughs> Elias Finch. Elias Finch. Mm -hmm. Elias Finch. Okay, thank you. All right. So for my bruv here, he likes to get uh, rough and tumble, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So he would need more something with more form or more function over form, if you follow my drift. Mm -hmm. Are you? Are we also looking for a suit on that end, or are we looking for? Uh, I would like to. If I'm going to change clothes, I would like to look. Like, we're a team. All right. Well, I don't have another one of those. And he'll point That's back okay. to you. That's okay. I can't afford it. Oh, all right. So, yes, sure. Um, he'll go back and rummage through and, and pull out this uh, sort of a, a nice uh, button-up linen shirt and a, a crimson vest that it isn't the same in sort of the detail and design as Archie's vest, but he'll, he'll pull that out and set it down um, and look through a lot of his uh, blazers and, and, and coats and things like that um, and keep shaking his heads at it. And instead, we'll pull out a, a pair of um, black pants that uh, are the same black as the sort of trim on the, the vest that he's laid out. Um, and then he'll he'll pull out one more vest. So the two that he has laid out, one is a, a plain crimson with black trim, and the other is this sort of uh, paisley design in crimson. The the paisley pieces sort of shine on the floral sort of patterns and things like that. Um, but once again, with black trim as well. Um, the first one has black buttons. The second one has horn buttons. So uh, he lays this stuff out and says, okay, look, uh, same basic outfit and design, still dapper, still... Ready to go, if you get my gist. One is a little bit more flamboyant. The other is a little bit dialed back. Do you have a preference between the two? Your choice, Archie. Let's go with the more flamboyant version, as this gentleman here likes to talk a lot. Right. I think it'll fit him perfectly. All right. Uh, so uh, he'll uh, he'll put the other vest back, leave the, the paisley one up. And um, scratch his chin for a moment, look at you and look over. And he goes to find uh, this this cloak that he'll pull off as well and set it over to the side. I think this might be helpful as well. And it's a very simple black cloak that he'll lay out with it. Um, very, very functional. It is the probably the most simple thing in here. But he'll lay all these things out together. These, of course, aren't magical, so the price is, is far less. Um, are you looking for anything in particular? I, I have a few things that I think might be, might be nice for you. Um, if you have any money left over, let, let me, before you decide, pull these things out. Um, and he'll pull out a simple black ring and a little jar that is the shape of a small bird's head. Uh, these two things are, are probably the, you know, the budget versions of the nice things I have in here. This particular ring will make you better at spells, at least damaging ones. And this little jar will allow you to uh, imitate bird sounds and call them to you. It's very pleasant. Do either of these interest you or just the clothes? I do like birds. Hmm. How much for all of it? How much for all of it? Well, uh, the clothes, 25 either. I'd say if we tack on the other bits, 100 with the jar. The ring is a bit hard to part with. It's actually worth more than the jacket. So I, I don't know why I brought it out. I just kind of thought it would be sort of a fitting thing. So maybe we don't tack that onto the price. <laughs> Tanner's baiting me. Are you going to steal? Oh, fuck yeah. All right. Absolutely. All right. Let's see um, what happens. All right, bro. That's no problem. We're going to leave the ring off for sure. Uh, 
let's look at all this stuff here. All right, and he goes and he's looking, holding up all the different clothing. Okay. Um. He goes, all right, six. You good with your choices here? I'm good with your choices, Archie. All right, then. We'll take uh, everything but the ring. All right. So that would be um, a hundred either. All right, he gives him the other hundred either. Okay. All right. You... At this, so the entire time, Archie is looking for, a, for an opportunity. Okay. Um, an opportunity go... to swipe this ring. I, I don't know what you want that to be. So, so is, it, uh, is, is six catching on to this is the question. Fuck no. Probably not. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then by yourself. Uh, not a uh, damn chance. As you're flipping through this and lifting up the clothing, uh, you're, you're, you play setting the ring to the side um, and intend to sort of flip it underneath. Go ahead and roll sleight of hand. Non-natural 20. Wow. Okay. All right. You slip this thing under um, and flick it up your sleeve and then angle your sleeve up enough to where it doesn't fall to the floor. It doesn't seem as if Elias has noticed. And he'll come around the counter and begin to uh, package everything up. Um, he very quickly sort of does a, a, a few cuts and um, stitching to uh, get your jacket, new jacket fitted to you. And we'll hand you back everything in these nice boxes and we'll take your gold. And he nods to you as you pay him. Thank you so much for your patronage. Uh, if you'd like to come back anytime, please do. We get new things in all the time, and the styles that you've picked, I think, are just going to be lovely. Very cohesive for the two of you to be walking around. I don't think it's going to be too much in the way of twinsies, so you should be fine there, but people will know that you're a unit. Understood. Well, we thank you for all your work here, Elias. No problem Maybe at all. we'll come back for that ring. I hope you do. Um, and he kind of starts looking around as the two of you begin making your way out. You open the door and the bell rings. Dling, dling, and you're back out on the street. <laughs> well, we keep going. We just keep walking. I don't say anything. That guy was very nice. I like him. Oh, yeah, is it? Nay. Seems he like a good was. guy. He knows his way around clothes. He does. I'm sure we'll go back there. I'm I'm super excited to try on my new suit underneath my apron. <laughs> you're gonna keep. You're not. You're not supposed to. You know what? That's all right. You you do what you Wait, want should, to do. Wait, should should I not wear my apron? No, you you really should. Probably. Father Dell gave it to me. He's good at chess. I know. You can hold on to it. Don't get rid of it. But it's not meant. To, it doesn't go with. It doesn't go with what he gave you. That's the problem. Oh, I don't know. Don't style. worry. Don't worry. I'll help you. I'll help you get ready before we leave next. Uh, the next time. Understood. Well, thank you very much, Archie. After your lovely shopping trip, the two of you make your way over to the edge. Since Baith has gotten you some rooms there, um, you go inside and Pansy doesn't seem to be working this evening. But you're able to get your two keys to your two separate rooms from the uh, young man who's working behind the counter. He points you in the right direction and you head back. You settle down for the night and enjoy a fairly dreamless and uninterrupted sleep until the early hours of the morning when you hear someone yelling downstairs. I demand to speak with Archibald Theodore Cromwell right this instant. You get him down here now, or else there will be hell to pay. (laughs) 